crystal growth mechanisms and methods to prevent crystal growth. There is an interrelationship between these two topics. If we have the knowledge about crystal growth mechanisms, we can control the stability of the suspensions and other liquid dosage forms by preventing the crystal growth. Before going into the topic, first of all we should know the morphology of a crystal. Crystal is a solid material which consists of atoms, molecules or ions and these are arranged in an orderly repeating patterns. The orderly repeating patterns are called unit cells. They extend in all three spatial dimensions. That is, the crystal is a three dimensional structure. The study of crystals and crystal formation is called crystallography. In nature, there are many types of crystals. The type of crystal which can be formed depends on the chemistry of the fluid or the solvent in which the solute is dissolved, the temperature at which it is solidified and the ambient pressure maintained. Properties of crystals There are mainly two types of crystals, ionic crystals and molecular crystals. Molecular crystals are again divided into crystals with polar molecules and crystals with non-polar molecules. The attractive forces in ionic crystals are electrostatic attractions. The attractive forces in crystals with polar molecules are London forces and dipole-dipole attractions. And in crystals with non-polar molecules, the attractive forces are London forces. The increasing order of the attractive forces is electrostatic attractions, dipole-dipole attractions and London forces. Coming to the melting points, any crystals have high melting points and the molecular crystals will have low melting points. These are the other properties of these respective crystals. General mechanism of crystal growth. Crystal growth is a step by step process. It involves mainly three steps. That is supersaturation, nucleus formation and crystal growth. Coming to supersaturation. Supersaturation is nothing but the amount of dissolved solute in a solvent exceeds the equilibrium solubility. That is, when the solubility of a compound in a solvent exceeds the saturation solubility, the solution becomes supersaturated and the compound may crystallize. Coming to nucleation. Nucleation refers to the birth of very small bodies of a new phase within a homogeneous supersaturated liquid phase. These are also the crystals, but they are of molecular size. So, they are termed as nuclei. Types of nucleation. Nucleation is mainly of two types. Homogeneous nucleation, heterogeneous nucleation. Homogeneous nucleation, the name itself says that homo, it is the same. That is, when the nucleus is formed by the same molecule of the solute, then it, it is called homogeneous nucleation. That is, for example, a salt solution which is supersaturated, and if we place a pure salt crystal of the same solute, then it is called homogeneous nucleation. Heterogeneous nucleation. When the nucleus is formed by the foreign particles, that is, other than the solute molecules, then it is called heterogeneous nucleation. Examples for this is the impurities present in the supersaturated solution, which form the base for the crystal growth, and the rough surfaces on the containers are also the examples of heterogeneous nucleation. Crystal growth. Many nuclei form in the supersaturated solution. All these are not stable. Only some of them are stable and provide site for the crystal growth. As stable nuclei form, they grow into macroscopic crystals. This portion of crystallization process is known as crystal growth. This process consists of several stages through which the growth units pass. The following steps are the steps for the formation of crystal growth. First of all, the transport of growth unit from or through the bulk solution to, a, to an impigment site, which is not necessarily the final growth site. That is, the crystal growth may occur at the impigment site or after afterwards the growth units may be transferred to the growth site. Adsorption of the growth unit at the impigment site Diffusion of the growth unit from the site of impigmentation to a growth site. Afterwards, incorporation into the lattice. 
this is the last step in the crystal growth here is the video of super saturated salt solution in which nuclei are formed and eventually crystal growth takes place mechanisms of crystal growth in dispersed systems the size distribution may increase during aging owing to three principal mechanisms that is the size distribution may increase means the size of the particle may increase during storage of the product the three mechanisms are oxal ripening polymorphic transformations temperature cycling oxal ripening the large particles grow at the expense of smaller ones that is the smaller particles will sacrifice their identity and dissolve in the solute solution and reprecipitate on the larger particles by this the size of the large particle increases in the final stage there will be only large particles in the solution and no small particles are present the basis for the oxal ripening is the following equation log s by s not is equal to 2 gamma v by capital r into small r into t where s is the solubility of small particles s not is the solubility of infinitely large particles capital r is the radius of small particles small r is the radius of large particles gamma is the surface tension v molar volume of the solid and t is the temperature here we should consider the difference between equilibrium solubility and rate of dissolution equilibrium solubility is a dynamic equilibrium this is at the given temperature it is affected by the particle size only in the particle size range near the colloidal dimension rate of dissolution dissolution rate is affected by the particle size since the surface area of the solid available to the solvent increases with decreasing particle size for example if we consider the calcium sulfate solution at 25 degree centigrade let us take average particle size of 2 microns then the equilibrium solubility will be 2.087 grams per, grams per liter and if we decrease the particle size to 0.3 microns then the equilibrium solubility will be increased to 2.487 that is as the size of the particle decreases the equilibrium solubility increases in a practical sense it means that a solution that is saturated with respect to small particles is super saturated with respect to large particles of the same substance the overall effect is an increase in particle size and a decrease in the number of particles in suspension this is oxal ripening here we can see the small particles are disappearing slowly and the large particles are increasing their size that is the small particles are dissolving in the solvent and again reprecipitating on the surface of large particles this is oxal ripening coming to polymorphic transformations polymers exhibit different equilibrium solubilities in nature we can find a large number of polymers for each drug substance there may be a 2 3 or 4 or more of more number of polymorphic forms for example phenylbutazone have four different polymorphic forms these four forms have different equilibrium solubilities the difference in the solubility of these polymers is the main driving force for the crystal growth in phenylbutazone the particle of the more soluble polymer go into the solution and reprecipitate at the less soluble we know the less soluble the more stable is the drug the process is accelerated if the drug powder used to prepare the suspension contains a mixture of polymers these are the four polymer form, polymorphic forms of phenylbutazone and their equilibrium solubility is mg per 100 ml here we can see that the fourth form has the lowest solubility 213 so finally it will be formed in the super saturated solution of phenylbutazone we can, we can also say that large number of crystals formed in phenylbutazone super saturated solution will be of fourth polymorphic form temperature cycling it leads to crystal growth as the solubility depends on temperature we know that the solubility increases as the temperature decreases solubility is directly related to temperature so that a slight increase in temperature leads to an increased equilibrium solubility a drop in temperature results in a super saturated solution surrounding each particle precipitation occurs to relieve the super saturation and crystal growth occurs that is to relieve the energy and to become stable from metastable stage crystal growth occurs
problems in suspensions with crystal growth. They may create undesirable changes. Caking, cementing may occur in the suspensions. Biological efficiency, bioavailability may be decreased. So we have to use crystal growth inhibitors. Crystal growth inhibitors. Mainly surfactants are used for inhibiting the crystal growth. Surfactants are of three types, anionic, cationic, non-ionic. These are the examples for these particular respect to forms. Polymers. The mainly used polymers are PVP, PEGs, polyalcohols, polyethylene, oxide, protective collides. In non-ionic surfactants, fluoronics are, ma are mainly used. Fluoronics is the trade name for the polyxamers, which are non-ionic tri-block copolymers. Section of particles with a narrow range of particle sizes, such as microcrystals between 1 and 10 mm. Next, selection of a stable crystalline drug with lower solubility in water. The lower the solubility of the drug, the greater is the stability in its solution. So, the polymorphic form which is less soluble in the sol solvent should be chosen. High energy milling should not be used during particle size reduction. High energy milling imparts charges on the small particles. Because of this, attraction of the same charges will take place. Afterwards, aggregation and simultaneously the crystal growth. If you want microcrystals, they are best formed by the controlled precipitation techniques or shock cooling. Shock cooling is nothing but rapid cooling of a substance. By this, microcrystals can be formed. A water dispersible surfactant wetting agent dissipates the free surface energy of particles by reducing the interfacial tension between the solid and the suspending vehicle. Here, the free surface energy of the particle can be reduced so that its solubility in the sol solvent can be decreased. The other way in which the surfactant acts is by forming a layer of micelle around the crystals so that the deposition of other crystal on the same crystal will be prevented. Control of zeta potential also helps in retarding the crystal growth. As the zeta potential decreases, the attractive forces increases. This is mainly encountered in emulsions and suspensions. So we have to control the zeta potential or maintain a little bit higher zeta potential to prevent the crystal growth. The viscosity of the suspending vehicle is increased to retard particle dissolution and subsequent crystal growth. If the viscosity of the suspending vehicle is high, dissolution will be low and crystal growth can be prevented. Temperature extremes during product storage must not occur. This is called freeze, freeze thaw condition. Temperature extremes may favor the formation of crystal growths. Supersaturation favors the formation of needle-like crystals and should be avoided. We know the starting point of the crystal growth is the supersaturation. As supersaturation occurs, it ultimately leads to the crystal growth as the temperature decreases. Rapid or shock cooling and high agitation should be avoided. In supersaturated solution, as the temperature decreases, crystal growth occurs. If it is combined with high agitation, crystal growth will be increased. So in order to decrease or control the crystal growth, agitation should be reduced and shock cooling conditions should be, should be avoided. Experimentation with different crystallizing solvents is recommended to change crystal size and shape. Crystal size and shape and different forms of crystals are affected by the solvent in which the solute is dissolved. So, different types of solvents are used to control the crystal growth. Impurities and foreign substances should be avoided to prevent crystallization. We know the impurities or foreign substances which are present in the supersaturated solution may act as a nucleus and form the base for the formation of crystal growth. So, they should be avoided. Constant crystallizing conditions are essential Batch to batch variation in crystal size and shape is often associated with poor control of processing and crystallization procedures. A protective colloid such as gelatin gum or a cellulose derivative is used. 
these form a protective layer around the crystals and prevent the further growth of the crystal. By this knowledge and concept of crystal growth naturally forms the basis for understanding how the crystals form and various factors which influence the crystal growth. Such an understanding of crystal growth studies widely used to describe how to improve physical stability of pharmaceutical formulations.